Yo, what's good? It's Zubin. I'm about to go in the DMs with Mascarilla Escada. I'm an old head. I'm 29. I'm from Philadelphia, born and raised. Fresh Prince style. And what do I do? I work part-time with my homie, but full-time music. That's what I'm trying to get at. You know how it goes. Oh, I produce, but I like I, I used to like spend more time producing probably. Like when I would play in like other groups, I was like more of a producer than anything. But now I just like kind of just rock with the vocals. Singing is like my main thing now. So before Zubin, I was a part of a three-piece like R&B group called Worshipper. We played like hella shows in Philly. We got a record out called Keeps. Shit is still banging. Came out in like 2012. But I kind of like was drifting in like a more like dark R&B-ish, like not to say SoundCloud, but like, you know, that vibe of shit. I kind of was like trying to drop things way more often rather than the typical band like release every year or something, you know? So that's kind of when I started pushing Zubin like I just wanted to have like a let out of my own. And that's like kind of when I started singing. I never really sang before that. Like I was just playing keyboards and producing for bands. I wasn't ever like main singer or nothing like that. The first artist I was ever like super into was like Eminem, typical. Then I got really into like CKY. Then I got really into like punk shit. Fucking Ink and Dagger was my shit. Um, you know, like ran a hardcore shit. Emo, I had a huge emo, like all throughout high school, I was like seen as fuck. Like Senses Fell is my shit. Thursday is my shit. They're all, honestly, I still like all of these bands and artists I just named still for real, for real. So that was kind of the vibe. I just, camera, I went through a huge Dipset phase. I was like obsessed with Dipset. I thought they were the coolest collective there ever was. Still love Cameron, still love Jewel. I love all of them. But yeah, I just kind of am like this mesh of like, all these artists and genres that I fuck with now. It was chill, I went to high school in Philly, so it was sick. I fucked with my high school. I definitely like straightened my hair every day before class and wore like tight ass girl jeans and shit like that. Yeah, cause so what year was that if you're 29 now? Uh, I graduated in 07, so like 03 to 07. So were you like going to Warped Tour growing up or? Yeah, I was going to like Warped Tour and shit like that. I would see like Freeway play all the time cause he's from Philly. I've probably seen him play what we do like 10,000 times at this point. <laughs> for real, for real, he plays it. He still plays it all the time. I love Freeway, but I've heard that song a lot. All right, so Zubin, it's kind of a dark story. When I was in high school, obviously I was hella into music, but as any other high schooler, I was hella into fucking Xbox and gaming. So I spent like every day after school playing Gears of War with this kid from India and his name was Zubin. And then we just like, I don't know, you know how the internet is? You can just like talk to somebody and like it's, just tell them like whatever the fuck. But you don't like see them so it doesn't even feel weird ever. You're just like, oh, like I'm depressed and like this sucks, but like whatever. And you just like kind of open up to each other and shit. So we became like super, super tight. We would just like talk all the time, video chat, like smoke blunts and bongs and shit together. Uh, both kind of got out of playing Xbox. I would like play him like random songs, just like that I was writing. He would just like sit there and get high and listen. Whatever that like our relationship just like stayed really tight for years. And then the one day his like IRL best friend hit me up, probably like 2011, 2012. I probably should know this, but I think it was around that time. And his IRL best friend hit me up and was like, yo, Zubin committed suicide, blah, blah, blah. So I was kind of just like already thinking of like doing some solo shit and hit like that kind of whole, or like that whole aura, just like that darkness kind of like matched like what I was like writing anyway. And like, I just like continued to write about our experiences and like or just like our conversations we would have and like shit like that so that's how Zubin was created so it's just a memorial for him for real keeping his name alive did Zubin's real life friend tell you 
why he did that or what the circumstances around it were? It was like, he just like had a lot of shit going on. It was definitely like, long story short, came down to like relationship issues. And he was just kind of like in the middle of nowhere, India at the time. And I guess that's like what he felt necessary, I guess. He was like from India? Or? Yeah, yeah. He's like born and raised in India, never left India. Yeah, he was also, it was like during like, he was like visiting his father, I think, in like the middle of nowhere. And there was like a, some sort of like social strike or like rebellion going on. And there was like no buses or anything back to like, he was like outside of New Delhi is where he was from. And he just kind of got stuck probably there. Maybe he didn't want to be there and you know, next thing. That was crazy though. So have you spoken to his family or his friends since? Um, literally the like, for years, no. Um, like the, fir- the, the cover of like my first ever EP as Zubin is like it's pretty dark but it's like the lake that he like he like basically swam into like a, like a strong ass current and it's like that's like the lake like that his friend sent me like a picture like oh yeah this is like where we found his clothes and shit and uh yeah that's the picture of the actual lake in India I don't know the name of the lake but uh I've spoke to his the same person that told me this news his like IRL best friend he hit me up like a month ago just being like commenting on like a shirt that I made like I finally made a Zubin t-shirt and he was like yo like if he knew like what you were doing he'd be like hype as shit but that's like you know we don't really talk much like what is your favorite jewel pod flavor I'm gonna have to say mango I fuck with cucumber heavy but that mango is fire so I'm going with Mango. If you had to cover a song right now, what song would you cover? Um, it would be Elliot Smith. The song is called Twilight. I've been playing that song on guitar. I suck at guitar. But I've been playing it since I was like 16 on guitar. It's like still one of my favorite songs. Easy as shit. Elliot Smith is fire. That song is fire. Do you have any unreleased material that you're really stoked about? And do you consider it better than what's out already? Um, the new Misery Club shit is probably some of my favorite shit I've ever been a part of. Um, that should be out in like a month or within the month. So you'll see what I'm talking about. And then the ne- like another thing I'm like really, really excited about is me and Slug Christ did a track recently. And it's super kind of just the vibe that I like making in general. And Slug's verse is crazy. And I think me and Slug kind of had, like, we can't, we can, we can match a vibe, like, really well. So that shit's gonna be fire when it comes out. <laughs> oh, fuck. Roll ups or gushers? I'm gonna go with gushers. Gushers remind me of soup dumplings. You take the bite, the shit explodes, it's fire. Same shit with gushers, just like a soup dumpling, it's fire. how did you and john meet me and john met like this year which is random because we're like the same age he i've known balance i've seen balance composure like a million times since i was like 18 but we met because i was text we were both texting wicca phase about music shit both while we were at the corbin concert in philly and then Wicked Face is like, oh, you're at fucking, you're at the Corbin show? John's there. He's drunk as shit. And I was like, I'm drunk as shit. And then, like, I just see John, like, looking around. And I was like, yo, Wicked Face told me to find you. And then we just became homies since then. A funny drunken night. It was good. Now we're, now we're very good friends. Are you finally flexing on the person you were talking to? And do you really think I need you? Because my heart got broken over the weekend. And that song has been helping me. Uh, To be honest, that song is not really specifically about a person. It's just kind of like written into like a relationship vibe. But really, it's just about like anybody trying to bring you down, any bullshit that's holding you back. Just like, fuck it. Keep pushing. You're going to stunt eventually. 
just keep going. How did you and Fantasy Camp end up collaborating? Uh, about a year ago now, like th it was last summer, so yeah, this time last year, Fantasy Camp, who I met through Wikiphase, just on, on the internet and shit, we never met in real life, he sent me a beat that I ended up using, and it's the song, uh, Where You At Girl, it's on my SoundCloud, and then Fantasy Camp would send me like demos of him and shit, and then like, what the first song we like he sent me with like a verse that he and he produced the beat was lock and key which was like on our latest ep another heart to break and when he sent me his verse i was just like all right like we're doing a whole tape so that was probably like seven eight months ago so we've just been working together a lot since then he's part of misery club so he's gang what's your favorite song that you've made Damn, now that I mention Lock and Key, I really fuck with that song heavy. But that I've like made, probably like written by myself, is gonna be, it's like IDWGT. It's I Don't Wanna Go There. It's off me and uh, Ned Arb's Misery Tape. That's probably my favorite, most proud. Like that's like the most proud I am about writing to this, uh, up until now. Hopefully I'll make more bangers, we'll see. How did you meet Nedarb? Um, it was funny as shit. It was, he was randomly, he was on the East Coast because his ma got like surgery or some shit. So he pulled up to the Working on Dying studio because he was friends with Filthy and everyone. And I pulled up. We got really fucked up. Me and him recorded a song that night called Pretty Hoes where he just freestyled and I just did like a little hook. He got verified on Twitter that day, so we were like celebrating heavy. I think we ended up at Onyx Strip Club, which in Philly is like a legendary strip club. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's like the extent of the night. I might be blending two nights, but I, that's, that's what I remember about meeting Ned. It was a very turnt night. He was verified, so he was geeking. Um, so working on dying, it started with like Filthy and the Lucy Man. And they saw this project that was playing in Worshipper probably in like 2012, around that time, maybe 2013. And they saw us play in Philly and they were just like, yo, like we need a fucking work. Like not just me, like they're talking about us. It was the three of us. So they're like, yo, we all got to work. And uh, I kind of just, it was like right when I started writing Zubin songs. So I was like, blah, 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 like try, trying to kind of get everyone together, but it's just, it's hard getting that many people together. So Filthy just hit me up the one day like, yo, I'm gonna just pick you up, come through the studio. We'll see what happens. And to, to be honest, like at that point, I never really like sang in a studio. So I went with Filthy, him and Lucy Man had just made this beat and then it was a song called Ease My Mind. It's on Working On Dying 2 that came out in like 2014, 2015. And um, I had a couple songs on it, but that was the first like song I ever recorded like in a real studio with them. And then for real, Filthy like kind of pushed me to just keep singing. He was like, yo, you gotta keep doing this. Like we gotta keep working. And that's kind of when I like went solo. Like I just kind of stopped doing the band shit and focused on the Zoom and shit. Working on Dying is like, essentially it's a collective of fucking fire producers from Philly. They're all sick. I love them all. Boogie Main produced like Overwhelming for Maddox. That shit did numbers. Boogie Main produced like hella shit for tons of people now. He's working with like Key, Lil Uzi. I mean, they all are. All of them are working with these people. But yeah, Drake hit up Oogie Main and was like, we're gonna do some shit. And then I guess it was like a week ago or a couple of days ago that Drake uh, released the first single. And it's that song, I'm Upset, produced by Oogie Man. And we all, I didn't see Oogie that night. He just stayed in the studio working. That's all he does. He's fucking deserves everything. He just works hard as shit, but uh, the rest of us got pretty drunk and celebrated. It was good. So how many times did you listen to that song that night? 
oh shit like just hearing like the beat start and then like drake be like hey and then you hear like i'm working on dying like we were all like freaking the fuck out it's just kind of crazy to hear he got more there's more to come with the uzi the little uzi working on dying stuff is fucking crazy so just wait for that only time i worked with maddox personally was kind of when he was first starting we were like before like working on dying had like a studio and shit we were I'm good homies with his mom. We went to high school together. So we um, fucking would, rec she would like bring him over. We would record him in my room. Me and Filthy made him a beat. It's a song called Too Late. It's hot. Matt killed it. He wrote it in like five minutes. And um, that was, you know, that's like the only like song I have with Matt. But like I'll be at the studio, like the you know, like the working on dying studio now, which is like a ball in studio. I'll be there and Matt will be like writing, freestyle and recording and he's super good songwriter. Like he's it's cool to watch him. Can you tell us anything about the music you're making with Lil Ugly Man or how you two linked? I know you guys have stuff together. We don't have any songs together yet. Yet though. That's the key word. I'm about to meet him this weekend. Do you smoke weed or do you just drink PBR? I guess that says a lot about my online presence because I probably Instagram video myself drinking PBR a lot. But I'm off the PBR right now. Tequila only. Tequila summer. Scott. Who do you plan on working with outside of Misery Club? Um, I don't know, hello people, a little ugly man, smart death, Lotus, Aaron, shit, Tracy hopefully, trying to work with Black Cray one day, Juice World, that would be legendary. Any plans on a new tour with possibly the whole Misery Club? Probably not for a while if that shit happens. I mean, that would be like, hopefully it happens, but it will be like down the road, it ain't, ain't no time soon. Favorite band? I'm gonna just say right now, at this exact moment, my favorite band changes like every day, but Vane. If you haven't heard Vane, go fuck with Vane. That shit is fire. How often does everyone or most of Misery Club get together and do you mostly write together in person or long distance? So the Misery Club tape that we're about to drop, Ned Arp and Fox Wedding sent beats. But me, John, Fantasy Camp, and Wick of Phase, we like rented like a cabin for the weekend. So we uh, kind of just wrote all the songs on the spot. It's four tracks that are gonna drop. One track I already did. But I'm sure going forward, it will be more of like a long distance thing just because everyone's kind of scattered, busy as fuck. But for the first tape, it was recorded in two days, just in the studio. What was it like making Misery with Ned? Uh, it was easy. It felt right. Me and Ned have been friends for a minute now. We've been talking about working on like, a tape together. He kind of just, I don't know, was just sending me beats that matched like my exact mood at the time. It was like fall and winter we were writing it. So fall and winter in Philly gets kind of like depressing. So the beats were just like slow, dark, and still hard hitting. I fucking love Ned Art beats. They're fire. Buy one. But it shit was easy. It just it just flew. It just like it just kind of like came together perfectly, and like we had the six songs, and we're like, all right, we don't need any more. Like let's just rock with this, and I'm happy with how it came out.